been incredibly wet here, so I haven't been into the jungle for the last few days, but I have been finishing off uh, the, the two Parang projects. So the long Parang, the 14-inch Parang, I put a rubber grip on and uh, some whipping here uh, for the alternate handle. I'll come back to this later on because there are a few items that uh, are, you can store here behind the whipping uh, you know, in case of emergency. So we'll come back and look at that again. The other thing that I've been doing is the wooden sheath for um, the parang that we uh, I rehandled with the yellow sereca. And this has taken quite a long time, actually. I thought, I thought it'd be quite quick, but it, it's, it's actually been quite time consuming. And that's partly because, um, you know, I used a, a very hard wood. Actually, I'll show you. This is, this is the piece, it's just a piece of floorboard, I think, that um, I cut the wood for the sheath from. Uh, and uh, it's just a little bit tricky to get it right. You've got to sort of measure things out carefully. This, uh, this part up here, which is used to sort of to, to grip the handle when you put it in, you know, you need to get it uh, quite accurate. So, you know, it's, it's been a little bit of a time-consuming job and not something that you'd really want to do, you know, in the jungle. It's more a sort of fun project to do at home, if you like. Uh, anyway, we'll come back to that because the next stage now is to to tie, this, tie these two pieces together. We're not going to glue them, but we're going to tie them with uh, rattan using this uh, knot called a simpan knot. And I wasn't quite sure how to tie the simpan knot, but a relative of Baha's, who is a, an expert at weaving rattan, was kind enough to show me, and I've got some video footage of him that I'll be posting soon, uh, and he showed me how to, how to tie the knot. And he was an interesting chap. Uh, he was showing me. He'd actually lost uh, his thumb from one hand which had been bitten off by a wild boar, of all things. Uh, the, the wild boar just attacked him pretty much out of the blue, according to him, and, uh, you know, bitten his leg, bitten, literally bitten off his thumb. And, you know, for me, it was quite interesting to hear that because I come across wild boar all the time, and I've been fairly relaxed about them. But having heard that story, I'm going to be a, a little bit more wary in future. The other thing that uh, I'll show you in, the, in some footage in a minute is how to very, very quickly make an emergency sheath for this if, if you lose your sheath in the jungle. And it's incredibly simple to do. You just find a piece of bamboo, preferably one that's thicker uh, than this and, and with a wider diameter. Uh, you know, you, you just split it in half and then thin down each of the halves. So this is, is from that piece of bamboo. And then all I've done is use the uh, rubber bands that I made from the, the inner tube, you know, my old favorite, the inner tube, to, to hold it together. And that literally took uh, under two minutes to make this. And, uh, you yeah, the problem with it is, particularly with this one, because it's, uh, uh, you know, the bamboo wasn't wide enough, it's not flat enough, so although it will hold the pan, it's going to rattle around in there a little bit. The other thing that you'd need to do if you, if you make it this way is uh, attach it to your waist. And you know, obviously there are no belt loops or clips on this. So uh, the easiest way to do it is uh, just to tie it on. And the knot that you, a very useful knot, and it's worth learning this knot, is the constrictor knot, uh, which I'll just show you quickly now. Um, I'll just tie it on the bike. So I've got enough there. I should do it. So... If we just pull that tight, and this is the constrictor knot. And in a second, I'll go inside and I'll, I'll show you how to tie it uh, properly, more more uh, more easily. And then if we just put like a uh, an overhand loop here. Oh, I didn't leave myself quite enough rope. Never mind. Just so I manage. There we go. And then this can be tied around your waist. And we'll put in a slippery half hitch here. And just secure that a little bit with, uh, with another sort of slippery, I don't what you call it really, bite. And there you go. You know, you've got your, um, <coughs> you've got your sheath attached uh, and you're ready to go. And if you want to take it off, you can just pull this end and the whole thing comes loose. The reason it's worth knowing the constrictor knot is um, if you compare it, say, to the clove hitch, particularly if you're using rattan like this, the clove hitch can quite easily come undone, um, which you don't want. And if you add this extra tucking 
to turn it into um, a constrictor knot, then you get a knot that uh, is really going to hold, which is, uh, which is what you want. So in case you've forgotten how to tie one, or you didn't know, I'll just show you very quickly. If you can tie a clove hitch, you're only one tuck away from being able to tie the constrictor knot. So that's our clove hitch, very straightforward. And all you need to do now is take the working end here and tuck it under the first uh, turn that you made from the outside to the inside so that the working end uh, ends up in, in between these two parts of the rope. And you just pull it tight. So that's your constrictor knot. If you want to make the knot even more secure, you can tie uh, a double constrictor knot. And here what we do is we double up the diagonal part here, come back round, under the two diagonals, and then tuck it underneath the first turn like that. There we go. And that's a double constrictor knot. Has a bit more friction. You can also tie the constrictor knot on the bite like this. Just uh, bring a bring a bite down. Come in front of the standing part. Twist it over what you're tying to. And pull it tight. Learning, and I know a lot of people don't like learning knots, but it really is worth learning a few, maybe ten or fifteen, because uh, you know the, the the great thing about knots is it gives you a lot of control over what you're doing. And I know a lot of camping, uh, camping equipment manufacturers try to eliminate knots from their equipment because they know people don't know how to tie them. But in fact, it's better to use knots uh, in a lot of cases than, than these substitutes for knots that um, um, camping manufacturers come up with. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.